To bystanders, it looks like a loving father buying a soda for his child in a convenience store. But in reality, it's a key piece of evidence in a chilling kidnapping and multiple murder. I remember just holding on to hope, but still feeling like there wasn't going to be any. A little girl far from home, abducted and under the full control of a savage, psychotic serial killer, Joseph Edward Duncan. Her innocent eyes have already seen up close what this monster can do. Uh, Joseph Duncan walked up to him with the gun and he was like, no, please don't, and then he shot him in the head. <laughs> But today, 18-year-old Shasta Groney, a survivor and a mother-to-be, finally speaks the shocking words that she's waited to say for 10 long years. And she tells her story only to Crime Watch Daily and our Melissa Moore. Do you remember much of that night or is it just a blur? I remember it like it was yesterday. I can't stress enough how much, you know, someone could not forget. Eight-year-old Shasta Groney is the baby of the family. Living with two older brothers, her mother Brenda and her stepfather Mark McKenzie in this small house near Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. She remembers their last night at home like it was yesterday. We had had a barbecue and we had family there and so we just went to sleep like it was a normal night. Um, the next day we had to wake up for school. No one in this happy young family remotely suspects that they have been closely observed for days. Stalked by a hidden dark presence, Joseph Edward Duncan, a serial killer on the loose. He will later confess to the rape and murder of three young children in the last nine years, but police don't know that yet. Nobody knows his motives for singling out Shasta's family, but he approaches at sunrise the next morning, full of evil intent and armed with a hammer. Shasta wakes up to her mother calling her. She had actually come into the room and woke us up and said that there's a man here that doesn't want us to be here. And when I had went into the living room, I had seen uh, Joseph Duncan. He was very protected and in all black. The family believes that Duncan only wants money. My stepdad Mark had said, we don't have money. Because Mark had raised his voice, he had said, you know, don't raise your voice or I'm going to shoot you in the head. That scared me a lot. But Duncan doesn't want money. He binds the hands and feet of the adults and Shasta's 13-year-old brother Slade with zip ties as they lie face down on the floor. He then ties the wrists of Shasta and her nine-year-old brother Dylan and leads them out of the house. Then he goes back inside with the hammer. I remember hearing my mom, like she went to go yell, but didn't have the time to. And then I heard my stepdad, Mark, we, we were hearing bangs and then he was screaming and yelling. At that point I had started crying. I had just gotten really scared. As Shasta watches in horror, her brother Slade comes running around the side of the house. He has gotten free of his restraints, but not from Duncan. His head was just covered in blood and just dripping down the front of him. And then we saw Joseph Duncan come out the back door and attack him. Duncan hustles the two small children into his Jeep nearby. Shasta looks back at her mortally wounded brother Slade, who has dragged himself to a picnic table in the yard. He was sitting on the picnic table and he was just, you know, sitting up and then he just laid down. The next day, a neighbour spots blood on the front door of the house and calls police. They find the bodies of Shasta's mother and stepfather and Slade, all killed by blunt force trauma to the head. There was blood transfers, blood drops, blood stains, virtually throughout the house. Numerous, very severe bludgeon injuries and a great deal of blood. Shasta and her brother have no idea of the fate of their family, but now they are on the run with a madman behind the wheel and police searching for them in vain. We did all that we could do to get the names of Shasta and Dylan and their images across the nation in an effort to try to generate some sort of lead. I believe that we were going to find those kids. I had to believe that. Duncan takes the children across state lines, a hundred miles away, to a remote campground outside St. Regis, Montana. 
when we were going to the bathroom, he watched us and that made me really uncomfortable because at that point I knew that his intentions were just evil. The horror continues with Duncan's rage focused particularly on nine-year-old Dylan. He got really mad, started throwing things. He took more of his anger out on Dylan and was really mean to him. Shasta begins to realize where it's all headed. I felt like I was gonna have to fight for my life. And she is even more terrified when Duncan reveals the truth about her family in a fit of anger. He grabbed the hammer, he said, see this hammer? And we said, yeah, and he was like, this is the hammer that I murdered your mom and your stepdad and your brother with. And he was like, they're not alive and you're never gonna see them again. Did, did you just cry? Yes, <laughs> I cried a lot. Yeah. Sorry, you had to say It's okay to cry. I mean, it's your mom. I'm so sorry. So I'm sorry. No child should ever have to have I'm so sorry. <sighs> well, that's the first time I've ever heard what you endure. You know, I knew it was bad. Eight years old, in the midst of a horror that few people could even comprehend, Shasta somehow rallies and begins to take charge, using every defence she can come up with to keep her and nine-year-old Dylan alive. I said, I promise that we're going to make it out alive. So that was um, my way of comforting my brother, just letting him know that like, we would never stop fighting. Next. The nightmare for little Shasta and Dylan has only begun as madman serial killer Joseph Duncan goes on a terrifying rampage. He had a sawed off shotgun and he had taken that and he had shot a hole in the tree and he had told us that this is what's going to happen to you guys if you don't start listening to me. 